The Corpse Grinder Cult Slaughterhouse is currently being led by a cutter, Bale. The Butcher Diablo was wounded, leading their gang into Ogren territory to hijack labor. It led to the death of one of their skinners and the injury of another champion. Bale is furious with the current leadership but directs his men towards the Black Shroud House de Lac. A vicious battle ensues and both gangs are left crippled on the battlefield. Welcome back to MGM, episode 9 of Ashes of Acropolis. Today our match features the Corpse Grinder Cult Gang Slaughterhouse and the Black Shroud of House de Lac. The campaign table has both of these gangs at 0-1, so both will be looking for their first win today. Slaughterhouse is led by a cutter Bale. He carries a rotary flensing saw. Skinners are Asmodan and Duriel. Initiates are Jurgen, Jarvis, and Craven. The Butcher, Diablo, and Cutter Mephisto are in recovery. They decide to bank their 25 credits and depart with six fighters, total wealth of 985. The Black Shroud of House Delac are short a Noct Ghoul and Ghost Specialist. They are led by Crypto, Master of Shadow. Following him into battle will be a Noct Ghoul, two Ghost, and two Shadows. They also bank their 25 credits and depart with six active fighters, total wealth of 1025. The Black 8 Ball determines our fate, or a random number generator, and it's landed on the scenario Mercy Mission. The battlefield will be standard, crews are random 5. In addition, both gangs will have one Rogue Doc and one Hive Scum, both with a stub gun. House Delac will start with deployment, and each player will take turns placing one of the random 5 enemy fighters until done. They will then place their friendly Rogue Doc and Hive Scum on a random battlefield edge. There will be no tactics cards in this game. All five random fighters from both teams will start the game seriously injured. Recovery rolls will be made as normal. At the end of each round, all fighters only have one wound remaining. All weapons count as out of ammo, but can be reloaded after recovery. There will be no lasting injuries in this battle if a fighter goes out of action in the battle. There will be no bottle test. For the Rogue Doc and Hive Scum, they can't coup de gras anyone. The battle ends when only one gang has fighters remaining except the Rogue Doc and Hive Scum, or one gang has three fighters base to base with their battlefield edge. That's the edge with the Rogue Doc and the Hive Scum, which they started on. Victory goes to the gang that's left, or to the gang that has three fighters in base to base with their battlefield edge. Otherwise, it's a draw, but since we're not very keen on doing draws, we'll think of a creative way to award victory if we need to. This one should be interesting to say the least, I have no idea what to expect. I don't pick the scenarios based on the gang matchups or ratings. The dice gods have spoken, and their will must be done. Turn 1 is coming up next, I really hope you enjoy. Turn 1 priority rolls go out, House the Lack is going to activate first. They're going to send the Rogue Duck for just a little bit. She's going to take a shot with her stub gun at the enemy Rogue Duck. She normally hits on fives and will land a hit. The Rogue Doc will go down pinned. And looking for a four to wound here, strength three against toughness three does not wound. After being pinned, the Rogue Doc is going to get to his feet and decide to use a movement action, keeping along his board edge. So quick note, then this first turn, the only ones able to activate will be the Rogue Doc and the Hive Scum. Back over to Delac, we've got the Hive Scum that is going to move twice. And then we flip over to the Hive Scum for the Corpse Grinders, and he is going to take a shot at the Noct Ghoul. Hive Scum normally hit on fours. The Stub Gun short range gives him a plus two modifier, so this is going to be on anything but one to land a hit. The Hive Scum lands a hit, but is unable to get a wound. Strength three, toughness three, looking for fours. Now for both sides, we will see some crawl maneuvers. Switch is going to attempt to get a little closer to the rogue dock here, trying to take advantage of the Medicaid rule. We're just going to do all the crawls at once as they look to get a little closer for some assistance. And with all of those maneuvers complete, it brings us to the end phase of turn one. And this is going to be really critical, where these guys are going to attempt to recover from being seriously injured. Since House to Lack had the priority that turn, we will start with them and their leader, Crypto. He is going to roll up for a flesh wound, rolling back over. Remember, they only have one wound remaining. The Noct Ghoul Nano also rolls back over with a flesh wound. Switch remains face down, even with his assist from the Rogue Doc. Sink attempts to recover next, 
We then roll up for Virus, who is going to get an assist and rolls back over with a flesh wound. Over for the Corpse Grinders, Bale attempts to recover, but it is no good. We then have Asmodan, who is going to attempt to roll back over. He is not going to get up. The Initiate Craven rolls up, and he is going to be good, rolling back over with a flesh wound. We then try again for Jurgen, and that Initiate is going to get up as well. And lastly, we have Duriel, who is going to get up as well for the Corpse Grinders. With those rolls complete, we are ready for turn two, and the Corpse Grinders are going to be up first. The Hive Scum is going to activate, and he is going to move forward and attempt to shoot. He's going to take a shot at Sync with his stub gun. It is short range, so anything but one, and he does in fact roll a one, so the shot is going to miss. The Knocked Ghoul activates next, springs up on a 2-up that's easily passed, and then he is going to roll up, needing a 2 on a D3 to make it into contact. That is successful, and Nano charges into the Hive Scum from behind. And this is a guy you don't want to be in combat with. He has Serpent's Fangs that ignore armor. He also has Rending and Paired, so his base attack goes to 4. He gets 1 for the charge, 1 for 2 melee weapons, hitting on 2s, and 4 of those are going to be successful. Strength plus 2 takes him to a 6 against the Hive Scum's Toughness of 3. That's going to be 2s to wound. 4 wounds going in. Rending makes it 5 total damage, and he cuts through the Hive Scum, taking him out on 3 flesh wounds, and then consolidates. And up next for the Grinders is Craven, as he is now able to get to his feet. He's going to attempt to reload his auto pistol, looking for a 4-up, and it fails. Sink then gets to his feet, also going to attempt to reload as well, looking for a 4-plus on his auto gun, and that is passed. He jams in another magazine. Duriel is going to get to his feet and then move into a blocking position, hoping to win priority on the next turn. For House Delac, the leader Crypto also going to get to his feet, and he is going to use his second action to open the door. Jurgen is going to use his action to stand up as well, attempt to reload his auto pistol, and that is going to be good. Back to House Delac, Virus is going to get to his feet, use his second action to move, getting into some cover. Corpse Grinders then activate their Rogue Doc, who is going to use both of his actions to move. House Delac then has their Hive Scum use an action to move forward. He's then going to bring his stub gun to bear against Jurgen, and it's going to hit him anything but one to hit. And we counted his toughness as three, but his toughness is actually two as he took a flesh wound. That three should have caused a wound, and we missed it. And the last activation for this turn, Asmodan's just going to make a crawl maneuver. And with that, turn two will conclude. All right, so we saw House Delac strike first as the Doc Ghoul sprung to his feet. That's why that skill is so important for them. Initiative of two, and you can spring up on a two plus and then have the ability to make your charge. It's absolutely huge. The Noct Ghoul easily dispatched to Hive Scum. Let's get into some of those critical recovery rolls. Bale is going to be first, and he is going to stay down with a serious injury. We're then going to roll up for Asmodan, and he is going out of action. That is not good for the Corpse Grinders. Switch will be able to stand again with some assistance, and we're moving right into turn three priority rolls. It looks like House Delac is going to take this one. The Noct Ghoul calls a group activation, passes a 6-up willpower check, bypassing the Skinner Mask, and launches into contact with Duriel. Once again, 6 attacks from the Serpent's Fangs hitting on 2s. All of them connect. Strength 6, Toughness 2 with his Flesh Wound is going to be 2s regardless, and all 6 are going to hit with Rending. The weapons face through his armor and Rend. We're just going to automatically take him out. There's nothing that he can do, and we will see a consolidation. Second part of this group activation, we have Sink, who was able to successfully reload his auto pistol in the last round. He moves behind some cover and he takes a shot at Craven. Normally hitting on fives, a short range takes it down to a four, and the hit is successful. And this is strength three against toughness two, threes to wound, and that is successful as well. Flak armor and an initiate's mask is a five up save, and that is successful, so there will be no damage. 
The next activation belongs to Jurgen. He is simply just going to get to his feet and move. Crypto is going to activate next for House Delac. He is going to ignore Jurgen and move through the open doorway. The Corpse Grinders are going to activate their Rogue Dock next, and he is going to use an action to open the door. He is then going to move where he can give an assist to Bale. The Black Shroud send their Rogue Dock forward as well. She has a ballistic skill of 5. She's going to fire her stub gun, getting that plus 2 modifier. So on a 3, she does hit. Corpse Grinder's Rogue Dock does go down pinned. There is no wound. Corpse Grinders then activate Craven, who is going to get to his feed. Still doesn't have any ammo. He's just going to use his second action to move into cover. The House of Shadow gets their Hive Scum into the action, pushing him forward again. He takes a shot here, which should be a hit, and I think we missed this. Blisket skill of four, he should get a two up for being within six inches. We did count that shot as a miss. We've then got Switch getting to his feet for House to Lack, and he is going to stay along the board edge. Virus activates next, using both of his actions to move, getting closer to his board edge, and we've then just got a crawl maneuver from Bale as he desperately looks to roll back over in the end phase. And that said, it does bring us to the end of the turn, where we will see if there are any recovery rolls. The big one is going to be for Bale. We're going to go ahead and roll out for that, and he stays down with a serious injury. As we move into what could potentially be the last turn, House Delac is going to win the initiative. They activate the Hive Scum first, firing his stub gun, needing twos. We roll up a one this time, that is officially a miss, and he is going to use his second action to move. We then have Craven, who is going to use both of his actions to move, making a run towards his board edge. Sync then activates, makes a move up to six inches. He's then going to attempt to fire at Jurgen with his auto pistol. He has a ballistic skill of 5, and that shot is going to miss. Jurgen then activates, and he is going to use both of his actions to move, trying to get closer to a board edge. Crypto is going to activate next to use both of his actions to move, getting just a little over an inch or two away from the boundary. And we've then got the Rogue Dock for the Corpse Grinders getting to his feet, firing his stub gun, and that shot is going to miss. Virus activates and drops down to the board edge, giving House to Lack two members at their board edge. Bale has just been really unlucky this round, still face down, unable to roll over and do anything to prevent House to Lack from running away with this game. The Rogue Dock for House to Lack is just going to back off. And then we have the Knocked Ghoul moving twice, extremely fast, able to move 12 inches, and he is ready to take Bale out of action on the next turn. As the turn wraps up, House Delac is going to take the victory in this one, as they have one of their fighters just a few inches away from the board edge, and all they have to do is move into contact with it to take this victory. We are going to roll a recovery for Bale to see if he can get up and potentially do anything in this game, but he does not. With the Rogue Dock close by, he does get to re-roll this. He does stay down with a serious injury. He also is getting an assist, and while he will roll back over with a flesh wound at last, it is too little too late. House Delac does get their third member to their board edge, just as Bale is able to stand. They do have two fighters within striking distance of their board edge, but House Delac is already there. And that brings this game to a close. House to Lack will be improving to 1-1, one one, while the Corpse Grinder Cult will fall to 0-2. Now we're going to dive right into the post-game, where this was a pretty interesting scenario. One, you could place enemy fighters on the board, and we spent some time on thinking of where those go. We place some at board edges, we put some in the middle. If I had this to do all over again, I would have put all of House to Lack's fighters towards the middle of the board, and force them to kind of go through the corpse grinders hand to hand if you will the issue is you have no idea which board edge is going to be yours because that is random as well so it's not like you can put them somewhere and expect that your rogue dock and your hive scum will come in from that side you simply just don't know bale not getting up until the very end of the game was the most critical piece of this game because had he have gotten up his rotary flensing saw is versatile i believe four inches 
he would have easily been able to charge into the Dalak members along that board edge, taking them out of action. Overall, it's just a very random, but kind of a cool and interesting type of scenario. I actually didn't mind the way that that played out, and even though Bale stayed down the entire game, I think had he have gotten up, it would have been a different game. As previously stated, House Falak will improve to 1-1, one one. while the Corpse Grinders fall to 0-2. They'll take 50 credits for their efforts here today. The Corpse Grinders will get 25. The man of the match is obviously going to the Knocked Ghoul. Nano, using his incredibly powerful spring up ability, quickly dispatched a hive scum and then took out one of the skinners with ease. I really hope you enjoyed the game. A big thank you to the Coffee Supporters Club. Your names are on the screen now, as well as on a piece of our terrain somewhere. If you'd like any information on that, a link will be down in the description. It's by no means necessary at all. I feel if you've watched the video this far, you've done more than enough to support our channel. Just feel free to leave a like, and if you found any of the production changes good or bad, be sure to leave us some feedback down below. I certainly appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.